The views and comments expressed on the following radio program by his hosts and their guests do not necessarily reflect the views of... Leave the kid be. Don't make me angry and racial with hate. You a fake and a pansy. Already great and ain't all that I can be. To me, I ain't shit, but to you, I'm a Grammy. If war winds are blowing, I bring out the family. The below squad got the gods and they're going. Break out the transit before you reloaded. My beam sorted, burning. My foes looking hopeless. Got all these bitches up on me. They 2D, they frequent my Abbey. Don't act like you knew me. Little for coolie, but high as I truly don't know which way's up. Release, don't confuse me. If she act up, then that's right where she lose me. I don't give a fuck. It's your loss if you choose. And I'll be making moves. You can stay where you're groovy. I I bet. So this is the Uncle Radio Show. This is yo. We haven't been on air in a minute. Let's, this is. It's been a while that. though. It's good to be back though. It's October twenty fourth. Let me throw my put my phone on on vibrate. That's how. That's how. That's how long it's been. I ain't even not even accustomed to having my phone on vibrate no more <laughs> and stuff. Oh man, but yo, first off, we're here with the incredible Jay Good. I'm sure oh I'm man, good. how you doing? What up? What up? What up? Yo, what Thank up? You for what having up? Me. Listen, yo, this is this is a this is a podcast partner right here, yo. This is. Oh, we're here. here, network family, right here. We, we out here. here. We, we out here. here. We out here. We out here. So well, welcome. We're good to have. We're happy to have you. Thank absolutely, you. Thank absolutely. So you know, damn, y'all ain't even heard me in a minute. So this is this is wise uh, at the real wise on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all the social media stuff. Okay, this is um, at Is Jones. I changed my Twitter name. Yeah, it's been a minute. You changed the Twitter name and all that. Yeah, yeah. So it's at Aurorianshire. A R U R I A N S H I R E. At some point in time, we're gonna get the, the backstory for that again. Okay, yeah. So it's, uh, some backstory, and of course, Jay Good. You know, shout out to social media and all that. Yeah, stuff. yeah. Straight out the den, everything. S T R the number eight O U T D A D E N. Bad. So all right, so I listen. I listen to your podcast all the time. You know. Thank you. Thank you. Um, not just because it's a part of the network, but obviously because it's, it's a very good podcast um, for independent artists. But let's talk about the name itself. Like I remember, it, I listened to an episode where you said that you had wished you didn't put a number in. Your oh name. yeah, so man. let's, let's oh. get the story behind that real quick. All right, so I was uh, around 13, 14 years old. Um, I got my start in music production, mm-hmm. so that's that's where everything started with for me and. Straight Out the Den came from me making beats straight out of the den of my parents' house. Yeah. Mm. So that's where it came from. And at the time, I was just being like ultra hip hop. So I spelled straight S-T-R with the number eight. <laughs> oh, then no. I spelled the D-A. So, um, you know, that was some... I, I remember that episode because I gave people advice. You know, my podcast is focused on giving indie artists advice mm-hmm. about, you know... Uh, their career and their journey on the indie circuit. And so uh, one thing that I said was like, you know, if I could do it all over again, I never would have chose the name straight out the den because I literally have to spell it out every, every time. time. I believe it. Every time. And it's like, you know, but I, I get it. And, and over time, it became something that people understand and know. So I don't have mm-hmm. to spell it out. Um, people know it, but I still spell it out just because just like, like yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're new, there's no way you're going to get straight out the den spelled that way so uh there you go that's the story though so talk to us about the scene in atlanta like you know you've 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 experienced it for for years now I'm not gonna date you but you've experienced it for quite some for quite some time now right so yeah tell, yeah tell us a little about what it is now what it was then to what it is now well i came i was born in atlanta man but um i came back to atlanta for college and so i've been there since 2002 mm-hmm. so i am dating myself um <laughs> so what's that that's i've been there for 14 years yeah. roughly and uh, it's changed a whole lot since i've been there like when i first came there atlanta wasn't as the thriving scene it is now like it was kind of we were trying to make our way so you had like the ti's and um and then the crunk era came like oh five mm-hmm. and, and once that happened everybody started to like flood into the city as yeah. far as people that's trying to make music uh so i mean but the scene has has really changed um a lot of people spend time on edgewood east atlanta village little five points peter street those are like the hip-hop you know uh places in the mm-hmm. city mm-hmm. but you know, you have a lot of open mics, you have a lot of showcases, you have a lot of, uh, I guess I want to say not as good quality Mm -hmm. things just because people know that people are coming to Atlanta to try to get on. And so, uh, there's a lot of hustlers in Atlanta taking advantage of that. And the content is starting to dwindle a little bit, but you do have some dope people out there that's making some stuff happen though. But yeah, you, 
Right, it's yeah. a lot of people getting taken advantage of. I put it like that. Speaking yeah. of the hustle, I know that the hustle mentality is definitely prevalent in New York as much as it is mm-hmm. in Atlanta. And seeing both scenes, or at least being a witness of both scenes, which one do you think is more difficult to break into, and why? Um, I'll say like being here for these past couple of days. I mean, I've I've been in New York quite a few times, and it is always the hustle. Everybody's on the move. Everybody's trying to make something happen. Uh, but I'll be honest, like we we did a show in um, Bushwick last night, and it was an open mic type deal, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and maybe twenty artists performed, and about ten to thirteen or fourteen of them, you couldn't tell they went from it, like from Atlanta. They yeah, felt like they were from Atlanta, yeah. and so I was a, I was a bit disappointed in that because I was used to coming to New York and getting like a New York feel. Mm-hmm. Um, now, don't get me wrong. Like, the artists that, that were not like that, like, they were New York to the core, and I love it, you know? But um, I, I it, it, it's always funny to me to, like, kind of sit back and observe, and it's like, man, like, this is no different than Atlanta. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, yeah. One thing I will say is that artists don't, like, hear artists don't use excuses. Mm-hmm. Like, Atlanta, I see a lot of artists use excuses, like, why they can't make this, why they can't do that. Like, I mean, we had... People is uh, Chelsea. I am Chelsea. I am. She's mm-hmm. a dope artist. Uh, she plays. Oh yeah, I know her. Oh, yeah, oh. yeah. She plays guitar and sing and all that. But as to where she, you know, where she's from, she was like, "Well, I live in Harlem," and yeah. she came all the way to, you know, to Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. And it was like, "Well, it's like a little over an hour commute." Yeah. Like Atlanta, you don't hear that a lot. Like you don't hear people going that far to go to stuff. Like most people are going to be around the city. So I thought that was dope. Like, oh, they got cars though. That's true. We do have we do have cars, but. It's just like up here. I feel like there are no excuses. Like there's no chance to give an excuse. You got to do it. It's whatever you want to do. You just go and make it happen. In Atlanta, we kind of are kind of. I guess we kind of babied a little bit because mm-hmm. we have quick access to everything, mm-hmm. you know. And and so people, um, not all people. Now there are some dope artists there that that's working hard. But I do notice that people don't move as quick as they should yeah. you know yeah. they, they kind of wait for somebody to give them some stuff sometimes I, that sounds crazy to me because mm-hmm. i'm a transplant myself and like okay. having someone having a new yorker hand or some shit i said bitch where where <laughs> yeah. these new york hands that's because i missed the bus yeah. oh yeah. Wow. yeah the um all right so um a3, tell, tell me a little about a3c like when did that when did that start or when did you first experience a3c um this was my maybe fourth or fifth a3c um so I really started going to A3C as soon as I started the brand of Straight Out the Den, like okay. officially as in the form it is now mm-hmm. as, as a indie platform, and so that was 2012. Mm-hmm. Um, the experience for me has been it's always dope to see artists come from out of everywhere to come to one place, and everybody's kind of like um, all about networking and grinding, and, and you know, I will say the shows kind of get redundant. Mm-hmm. It, it's just mm-hmm. like. Last year was the first year where I spent the bulk of my time at the conference center, and I would tell anybody that ever comes to A3C, go there. Like, the performances is cool, but, you know, the the truth of the matter is, unless you're on, like, one of the main stages, Mm -hmm. you're pretty much performing in front of a bunch of artists. Mm -hmm. And that's not really, you know, it's not... it's not the most beneficial. Yeah, there's yeah. value there, but not like what you might have come to A3Z for. Absolutely. Okay. And, and most artists don't find that out until they, they get there. The conferences, though, super dope. Like, I mean, the first year that I really paid attention to the conferences, I was like, you know, Rosenberg right here, Cypher Sounds right here, Combat Jack right here, A King right here, um, premium Pete right here. like I'm right here in the midst of all of these guys and we just having casual conversation and that's yeah. something that probably normally wouldn't happen yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. if you know A3C didn't exist and mm-hmm. so uh, it's things like that that I absolutely love because everybody let it doesn't matter if you're the who's who you know you let your guard down and like everybody's just here especially we kinda, at the conference at the conference, the conference center, center okay. absolutely but if you're out at the festival stages they're trying to enjoy the show just like you are mm-hmm. so there's no time to try to really like oh hey hey how you doing let me get your info no like no conference though everybody's cool laid back calm you know you can talk to people easily that's what's up yeah. talk what's to up. us a little bit about the panels I'm interested because I haven't been yet but mm-hmm. everyone keeps telling me if you write about hip hop it's something you need to be a part of yeah um, the panel at A3C it, there, there are several different panels um, I 
I like it. Pretty much anything that sparks my interest, I'll go if they have a panel on it. But, I mean, it's typically like they'll have a room, maybe a room about, uh, well, it's a little bit bigger than this in, in here. But they'll have a panel of maybe three to five people talking about a, a specific uh, subject. And, you know, they'll they'll talk and then they'll have an open forum where you can ask questions. And, and it's, it's very informative, I think. Um, and there's so many different types of panels, which mm-hmm. is what really makes it dope. It's not just like... Hey, how to break into the industry? Like, no, there's stuff like on podcasting. There's stuff on engineering. Uh, oh, you might have a panel on like, you know, how to properly start a podcast or um, how to uh, market yourself or digital media. There, I mean, the, it, there, there's a lot of topics on, as far as the panels go. So, yeah, I think it's dope. Yeah, that's what's up. That's what's up. Um, so this is, I mean, this is not technically all three calls. It, it's a three C stands for all three coasts. So mm-hmm. all three coasts is the uh, east, south, and west. Or it, it's it's supposed to be uh, east coast, west coast, and Gulf Coast. Go- okay, yeah. okay, 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 okay. Well, we got um, east. I guess two members of the east coast, and then a member of the west coast over here. Uh, west right. coast. We got yeah, uh, sure. west coast. Yeah, we got yeah. west coast. <laughs> right here, yeah. So so talk to us a little bit about some artists that you personally would co-sign coming from the Atlanta area. Now this um, is important. Yeah, definitely. Um, and you know, <laughs> all right. So there, to me, there's, there's. I'll give you two different tiers of artists. Okay. Out of um, bubbling out of Atlanta. So like the artists that is like pretty much on their way. Like to, if they pop tomorrow, I wouldn't be surprised. Would be mm-hmm. probably Scotty ATL. Okay. Like okay. Scotty ATL is really moving in the city. He's connected. He's he's been on tour with uh, Bob and Big Crit. Like he he's oh. really moving in the city. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I'm I'm just giving you the list of artists that I really listen to because there's there's probably like way more artists than that, uh, but artists who I really dig, uh, Div. Mm. Um, Who's here by the way? Yeah, Div, Div. Div is here. Oh. Um, he's from SoCal, but he he's been hey. in Atlanta for a while. Uh, Div, J. Coop, um, mm-hmm. Fleetwood, Fred. Mm-hmm. Um, I know I'm missing some people. Um, Don't get mad at him if he didn't. No, 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 game. no. But just like like Rod McCoy, the whole winter circle is a collective of like artists that really came together, like minds, and like trying to push forward. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that whole crew there, Milestone, Fresh Ali, who's uh, he's been working with uh, Jermaine Dupri. He was up here recently, matter of fact. Yeah, yeah. Fresh Ali is super dope, man. Uh, shout out to Fresh. He, he's like that Atlanta cat that knows exactly what he what he wants to do, and he has a record like called NWA. It's like it's crazy, a crazy record. Um, I deal with a lot of artists, though, man, like Theo Taiwan. Um, you know, there's so many artists that come through the pipeline that I like, and, and they're all moving in their own way. Um, but, yeah, and, and I'm sorry. Y'all. I know some people are going to get mad at me. Hey. It's nature of the business. Can't sorry. Be helped. Y'all can't know sh- if I rock with y'all, man. It, it, it's the truth, truth haze, man. Shout out to truth haze. There you go. The, yeah. dope, the dope part and the value and what I'm seeing, what I see from, like, all, all of us working together on the network mm-hmm. is that, all of, everybody who you just named, I already even heard of them. Like, yeah. shout out to Todd, shout out to DJ Find Me Up and Find, Find Me, me up. up ATL Podcast. Yeah, that comes out every Tuesday. Um, yeah, I mean, I've listened to all the every single artist that you name. I've heard music from mm-hmm. them already as it is, whatever. Made sure I try to tweet them and stuff like that. So definitely, you know, submit your music. DJ Find Me Up. At Find DJ Me Up. Find got me you. Up. Yo, like yeah. honestly, but then you know, that's, that's honestly that's dope. Um, it's a lot of artists here that's buzzing. That's buzzing as well. That kind of um, uh, also buzz in Atlanta but the, an important thing I want to talk about really is you had said that the artists that performed in Bushwick yesterday really sound like they were from Atlanta about at least 10 at I least mean 10. there were a lot of artists so that call it performed. half call it half yeah that's I'll, a lot ha- half is a fair assessment there, yeah. there was over half yeah and Atlanta's like 13 hours away from here driving <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah so yeah. but you know what I you know People here get really upset about that, mm-hmm. that that happens. But how I look at it is that if you were to look at this from a perspective of you talked about the crunk era, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like I lived in Charlotte during the during that time period. Okay. I lived in Charlotte from 2002 to 2006. Oh, yeah, you were there for it. Yeah, yeah so yeah. my entire high school time was mm-hmm. Lil Jon, um, Young John, like the soldier, but like all Absolutely. these people, like that, those were yeah. the time. So if I'm growing if I'm growing up in that in that in that phrase, but obviously being from New York, I've seen I've seen mm-hmm. the New York side. But people who have never seen that, people who grew up, who grew up in the 2000s, yeah. their only their only experience is going to be from Atlanta, right? You know, here's the thing about that because I understand that I completely understand where the music is and, and you know um, where it's going. Mm-hmm. It's just like 
when New York was like New York when yeah. all everything everybody wanted to break in and figure mm-hmm. it out. So even like being from the South, like acts like Outkast and Goody Mob, even though they had their own sound, if you go back and listen to like the first album of like Goody Mob Soul Food and mm-hmm. uh, Southern Playlist and Cadillac Music, it was heavy sampled. Mm-hmm. You know, there there were a lot of elements that they took from New York to kind of mm-hmm. break in, and then yeah. eventually they went and started doing their own thing. So it happens. Mm-hmm. I get it. Mm-hmm. It was just so weird to sit back and see that like. Yo, I'm in Bushwick, Brooklyn right now, and I could have sworn that I'm on Edgewood. <laughs> it tripped me out. Like there, it was one girl who song. Hey, don't like these songs were dope. Like they, they were great records. It just, mm-hmm. it just kind of blew my mind. Like there was this one girl I forgot her name, uh, but she had a record that was so turned, and I was just like, Yo, she would kill in Atlanta. Like I mean, the energy because like the energy was super high. But like, if she brought that record down to Atlanta, uh-huh. it would kill. Yeah. But the flip side of that, as soon as she said that she was from New York, people would be like, turned off. Really? Yeah, because it's, it's the stigma. It's like, why are you from New York making music like us? But you know what? I mean, like, we're in the, we're in the age of the internet now where you Absolutely. can literally hear someone from Atlanta. If you don't want to listen to, if you don't want to listen to anything, and I'm going mm-hmm. to plug, follow me up again. If you don't want to listen to anything but music from Atlanta, you listen to DJ Fire Me Up. DJ Fire Me Up. You will, you will hear, you, that's all you will hear every single mm-hmm. week. But the sensitivity know? comes in is that it's implying that New York has no sound of their own. Which is crazy because New York, specifically the Bronx, made hip hop possible. That's where, that's, that's where it comes DJ from. DJ Herc gave us. Yeah, I mean, I, I, think, I think that it, it's. I mean, hip hop is what, 35, 40 some odd years? 70. Uh, 70. It's it's Something. late seventies, early yeah. early eighties. It's it's, yeah. a, it's it's starting to get of age now, mm-hmm. where like some of the sounds blend. Like for example, you know, I, my next question was asking about Toronto, right? I hear a lot of dudes from New York now sound like they're from Toronto. Oh my well. god, yo! When like, we went to Toronto, that blew my mind. They may as well was... put over your in front of their name. Actually, I know a guy in Philly <laughs> that has over your in front of his name, and he's That's from wild. Philly. You it was know? like we never left New York. It looked like a New York scene. It, it was wild. You know, but, so it's it's like when you you know. Do you think that you'll start seeing guys and, and gals from Atlanta um, who start sounding like they're from Toronto? Yeah, absolutely. They're like, here's the, the, the gift and curse of, of music, right? It's cyclical. So mm-hmm. at any given point, it's going to come back around. Mm-hmm. And it's all about who's hot right now. Like, yeah. So when Little John and, um, you know, Young Bloods and, and all of that once that sound was hot people felt like okay I gotta make records like this to get on mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. for us Atlanta's kind of continued that, that trend and, and like we're, we're still kind of con- you know perceived as who's hot right now mm-hmm, and so mm-hmm. people are gonna make those type of records yes. but just as soon as somebody else breaks in Drake mm-hmm. everything shifted so yeah. when Drake really put made a push now you got artists like Party Next Door mm-hmm. The Weeknd Division mm-hmm. All of these artists, and now you have even new artists like Bryson Tiller, yeah. you know, um, Tory Lanez. Tory like, yep. without Drake, those artists don't, don't exist. And not saying that they wouldn't sound great, but we wouldn't appreciate them the way we do now. The way we do now, if it weren't for Drake. And so, because those are the records that are topping the charts, people are going to start making those type of records, mm-hmm. and, and soon you're going to get forty to sixty percent of people sounding like Drake. Yeah. And then we'll be having this conversation two or three years from now. Like, why everybody sound like Drake? You know what I mean? So, so then, do you feel that the industry now is becoming more about just getting record play than actually making innovative music? Uh, honestly, I think it's innovation. Like, what Wise just said a few moments ago, we're in the internet age now, right? Mm-hmm. Like, to be honest, how many people really listen to radio? Like, there's not that many people that listen to terrestrial radio anymore yeah. like that. Yeah. So... The kids that are in this generation, I say kids, I'm 32, but they're not <laughs> like kids, but you know what I mean. They don't have to listen to a song on the radio to like it. Mm-hmm. They'll find it three months ago. Mm-hmm. When the radio finally get it, like they've been they've on been it and it. moved yeah. on, you know. So they'll go in and listen to new music on the radio, uh, on SoundCloud or uh, Spotify, whatever they use to find music. They'll find it, they'll like it, they'll love it, appreciate it. Some people might buy it, most people are going to stream it. That's what we're in right now. Mm-hmm. But they already find it and they love it. It's the, it's the age of the internet. And so the beauty of, of that part is that you can create your own fan base as an artist. Like yeah. you don't have to find a radio record, take it to radio, service it to radio, and, and hope that it gets picked up in you know 30 markets. And then, oh, wow, you popped in your own. Like, no, like you can have 
the record that's popping in Atlanta and a kid all the way in Iowa will love that record. He'll tell mm-hmm. somebody about it in Canada and they're going to love it. Mm-hmm. Next thing you know, your music is going to play overseas and in the UK and all of that. And you, I mean, and, and these artists like don't even leave where they're, they don't leave their block yeah. and they pop, you know what I mean? And, and so that's just where we are right now. Uh, 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 not unfortunately, but that's where we are. You don't need radio to win. Like you just got to make dope music. So the innovation, to answer your question, I went all the way around it. But <laughs> that's a good answer. Yeah, yeah. The innovation answer. is still there. It, yeah. It's still there. Yeah. So in terms of um, advice, you would give <laughs> artists now knowing that you know. Matter of fact, you know what? Yeah. You know, if you're not the advice that you would give an artist um, who's listening to this episode right now, that is. Um, listening to this on our website, anycreativenetwork.com plug. Um, that is in 10 cities and three countries and two continents. So you can hear anyone anywhere can hear this. Mm-hmm. Actually, we have a South African show on the podcast on, on the network it's now. Dope, dope. And they focus, they feature a lot of South African hip hop. So for everyone listening, like mm-hmm. what's a, a core piece of advice you give to an independent artist? Um, the best advice that I can give you, uh, and I'll, I'll condense it down to three things. Uh, the first thing is figure out who you want to be as an artist, like figure out your brand. Um, do you want to be an artist that want to be known by the world or do you want to be an artist that want to be known by 20,000 people? And don't get me wrong, 20,000 people is great. If you got 20,000 fans, you can survive in, in today's climate. But you got to figure out, you know, basically, and, and to, to, to simplify that, you got to figure out, do you want to be an artist similar to Drake or do you want to be an artist similar to Big Crit? Yeah. Hmm. The world knows Big Crit, mm-hmm. but Big Crit can walk around. Yeah. The world knows Drake, but Drake can't walk around. Right, so you yeah. got to figure out which one of those, you know, what kind of artist you want to be. Once you figure that part out, the second thing is, is like literally do what you got to do. Like just go out there, create dope music, create dope music and have a marketing plan. Like mm-hmm. you have to figure out, I'll simplify that even more. Figure out who you want to be as an artist. Mm. Once you figure it out, find your publicist mm. and, and find your booking agent. Like, cause right. the third thing I was going to say is like, get out of town. Mm. Most people think that you got to blow up at home. It is the biggest misconception ever because what happens, at least in my experience, what happens is you become too familiar at home. Mm. And so artists or even your fans, like, they'll start looking at you and like, oh, okay, I'll catch you next week because you're going to be performing here next week. Mm-hmm, or, you mm-hmm. know, you're performing two or three times in the same place. Like, they're going to get used to seeing you. So, my thing is get out of town because yeah. there's nothing better than your fans, like, in Atlanta seeing Dia perform in Brooklyn. Because they're looking at, like, the first thing they're going to say is, how did he make that happen? Mm. Why is he performing in New York? Mm-hmm. I thought he was, like, an Atlanta-based artist. Like, how did you get... To New York, and so that creates a bit of mystery, mm-hmm. and then that also gives Div and gives me a story to tell. Yeah, right. Piece. Yeah, it's a conversation piece. So now you have a story to tell on how you can do that, and then the next thing you do, two more weeks, go and do it somewhere else. Dope. You don't need to perform at home, Dope. like you really don't. You can perform at home maybe once every two or three months. Mm-hmm. Just be out on the road, but you got to be on the scene. There's ways to make yourself noticed in your in your city where you're from, but move. You got to get out of your city. Okay. Let's go. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, last question before we get Div on here as well. Um, booking agent, mm-hmm. right? You said that you you should you would definitely tell them to get a booking agent when they're ready. It's when they're ready, whichever whatever that whatever mm-hmm. that may be defined as, right? So. Where would do you have any references from booking agents? Do you what do you what, what's your advice there? Your your best um, a booking agent honestly is not everybody's not ready for that. Okay, you know um, most booking agents if you if you want a good booking agent they're probably going to find you mm-hmm. because you've okay. already started to make some type of noise or somebody in your camp or you know somebody around will be able to uh, point you in the right direction. So. I, Booking agent, maybe not so much. When I said booking agent, I really meant like get out on the road. Like you got to get mm-hmm. out there. The booking agent will come, but you got to get out on the road, man. There's no reason 2016 to be an artist and you're performing only in your city. Like I don't care if you got to drive an hour or two hours. Just go and drive in uh, the opposite direction and go and perform in one of those places. But, yeah, booking agents, they'll come. But, you know, you got to think. 
it's just like with the manager, right? A lot of artists feel like they need to have a manager, and it's like, are you ready to give up part of your income mm. to somebody to manage your career? Do you have a career to manage? Yeah. Word. A lot of people just don't want to do work. That's, that's a, why they that's want a, to manage. That's a bigger question. Do you have a career to manage? Do you have a career to manage? Because, you know, somebody's going to come in and want to take, you know, 15 to 30% of that. Are you ready for that? Do you have 15 to 30% to give up? You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, uh, a lot of artists, like, you guys don't need managers yet. Your career is not at the point where you need a manager. You just need to get off your butt and work. Word. Simply put. All right, so we can go to this quick break. When we come back, we're going to have Div in the building, son. The song for radio show. All right, yo, what's good? Uh, this is Wise. You know, y'all just been hearing me chat for a little while. This is technically our commercial break, but I'm actually recording this today, like November 2nd, in ICN Studios. So the reason why, I just want to explain a little bit why we took such a long break for the Uncle Radio Show. You know, um, I started in the Creative Network a while back, you know, earlier this year, and I really wanted to focus on getting that where it needed to be. And it, it didn't feel right. It didn't feel fair. I was focusing a lot on my own show while I had the responsibility of other shows as well. So now, as you heard on the episode and as you'll hear in the second part of the show, we've really been doing a lot of big things with, with um, Indie Creative Network. We're really excited. We really want you to share. We, I want to share some of the things that we have. I'm not even going to edit this. Fuck that. Like, I want you all to really hear how I really feel about this, you know, because... It's a big thing. You know, we're trying to highlight black and brown influencers across the world so that we can showcase the um, the best parts and even some of the worst parts or just everything in between uh, of, of the black and brown diaspora. Because there is this mindset that the black and brown diaspora is this monolithic thing. When I say monolithic, I mean this, you know, one straight, rigid, you know, one size fits all mentality about who we are and what we do. And that's not the case. And, you know, through the Indie Creative Network, and through people that I interview on this show and anyone you ever hear me talk to for the rest of my life, I want to showcase how diverse we are. You know, I, I just, I'm not going to go on this long rant. I just wanted to keep this short. Thank you for fucking with me all this time. Follow me at The Real Wise. Follow the show. Follow everybody on the network. So check out IndieCreativeNetwork.com. IndieCreativeNetwork.com at IndieCreativeNW. We out here. We really supporting y'all and trust and believe that we have this studio now and shit's about to get crazy. Back to the show. Anyway, we back. Um, this is Encore Radio Show. Make sure you guys follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Encore Radio Show. This is Wise. Um, here with Jay Glyph. Shout out to Dan. Still and here. We here with Div, man. Yo, Div, shout out to social media and all mm-hmm. that good stuff. What is up, man? It is Div in the flesh, man. We out here in Brooklyn. It's crazy. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at, at D I V A N C E. There's no periods, no underscores, no nothing. Again, D I V A N C E. Or, or Twitter, uh, Facebook, anything, man. Just drop it in Google. All the social media. Yo, he got the crazy lineup, son. The lineup. Hey, man, shout tailored. out. Shout out to the accident. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was an accident that we ran with, so. Oh, really? Yeah. You know what? Not nah, the best accident. The, the best the best thing that happened come out of accident, so. Yeah, we had to. I was a little upset about it, but it's cool, man. Shout out to my barber, Callaway, man, in Atlanta. <laughs> Cut creators. Bad, bad, bad. So, you from SoCal. So, talk about uh, your time in SoCal and, you know, how you transitioned over to living in Atlanta. All right. Uh, I'm originally from uh, Southeast San Diego, uh, but went to high school in a place called Victorville, California, which mm-hmm. is actually polar opposites. Grew up 15 minutes from the beach, but where I'm from is two hours from Death Valley, so it's nothing but dirt and tumbleweeds. Wow. But it is what it is. It's good people, small town vibe. It's like the country of California. Okay. You know what I mean? Like the Wilson, North Carolina of Southern California. But then I ended up going to Clark Atlanta University in Atlanta in 2009, mm-hmm. and here we are. That's what's up. That's Six, what's seven up. years later, man. That's what's up. So your career itself, did it start out west or did it start um, and during your time at Clark Atlanta? Um, I don't talk about this, but I say the first project I ever put together was a 11-track. No, it was a 13-track project I released in Orange County through some people. Um, and it's completely escaping my mind right now. Uh, Artisan's Label. Artisan's mm-hmm. Label in um, Southern California did that. Uh, put the record out, moved it the best I could, but I didn't really have anybody to teach me how to maneuver. Everybody mm-hmm. else was just kind of saying, do it like this, because we saw somebody kind of do it like this, but we're not mm-hmm. artists, so we don't know what you should do. It didn't work. Mm-hmm. So then the next year, I released a record called Good Luck, and that's when Straight Out the com reached out to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Jay Good called me in for an interview, and I'm like, 
like uh, my my ex girlfriend was like managing my email account, so she was just like, "Yo, this dude wants you to come in the interview." I said, "Why? For what? What is he like? What does he want?" <laughs> and then he said, "Just come in and you know it's real laid back. We'll have a conversation and then we'll go from there." Man, I came in, had a convo with bro. We chatted up for about an hour. And then when we got off the record, he was like, yo, man, I make beats and stuff like that. Who you who you working with? Who you recording with? Do you want to make something happen? I said, man, nobody really. It's just me out here kind of thugging it with my old lady. The next week, I came back on like a Tuesday. We made like five beats. The week after that, we recorded five records. The week after that, we packaged the record. And then we went through artist development. Oh, Three man. years later, man, we yeah. got the neat tape out, so it's cool. <laughs> well, Jay, good. We got you here in the building right now. Yeah, so man, let, let me yeah. tell me about that. Like you reached out to him, or whatever. Tell me what you heard. What what, what inspired you to, to um, reach out? Um, at the time, I was um, going through records, like, and I still go through my email, but not as like I used to. Okay. Like at that time, I was still early in the blog game, and so mm-hmm. you know, I was super excited. I was at the point where I was going, you know, maybe getting twenty to thirty emails a day. So I, yeah. I literally had time to go through twenty or thirty mm-hmm. emails a day. Now it's you know way more than that. <laughs> but you know, I was listening to everything, everything that came through the pipeline, and then I heard this record, Good Luck, and I was just like, Yo, I don't know who this dude is, but he's super dope. And you know, my thing was, I only wanted to really interview artists that I felt like. Um, they cared about their craft. Okay. And, and so I heard good luck and I was just like the storytelling on it and, and the confidence on the record. I was like, man, let me call this guy. And then I found out that he was in Atlanta yeah. and I was like, all right, cool. Well, you got to come in and, and do a podcast. And so, but like you said, we had an hour conversation and from the conversation, I was just like, man, I like this dude attitude. I like what he, what he got going. You know, I know he can rap. I was like, well, shoot, I'm just going to shoot my shot. At the mm-hmm. time, I was doing a series called One Vinyl, yeah. where I would basically flip a vinyl. Like, I'd take one vinyl and flip it and make, you know, so many beats off of it and then just, like, work with, with artists. Mm-hmm. And truth be told, that idea went completely out the window, and Div ended up being like, actually, I sent beats to, like, four different people that we were supposed to work on a project, and Div happened to be the person that we just really focused on. Yeah. And, um... We, we flipped a lot of Ray Charles uh, on, on this project, and we called it Blinded Conversations. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the work that we did on it, it was like we, we did the, like, official listening party and, like, really pushed the record. Um, I don't, we, shot, we shot a video off of it. Um, crazy, that was, like, the first video I ever edited, too. I'm just thinking yeah. about it. That was the first video I ever Start edited. And, um, yeah, but it, it was just the music was so well, like, it was it was rough and, and rugged, but it was just so like, man, stuff is starting to move. Mm-hmm. And Div just had a plan, and I was like, man, this guy got a plan. Like, let's just work and let's just move and, and see where we can go with it. And you know, it's where we at. <laughs> yeah. So Div, man, all right. So from that like that time period, you know, so y'all shot a video. So we're gonna focus on the video for a second. You know, y'all, you've now connected with this person who lives in Atlanta. Um, mm-hmm. And he, and all, but from what it sounds like, he basically kind of became a part of your team. Like y'all started working closely together, whatever. Right. You know how important was that for you as a person to even let him then say, okay, we well, let's let's shoot this video. I'm gonna edit this video for you. Whatever we're gonna put this project out. We're gonna do all these things. How important was that for you as a, as a young artist? At the time, and I was real hesitant about working with people. But at the same time, I was so used to people telling me that you're not supposed to be rapping. It's not for you. Nah, it's whack. You know, nobody was giving me real feedback and response from it. So at one end, I'm hungry. I'm like, yo, man, he said he fuck with my stuff and he really wanted me to work on him. On the other hand, I'm like, man, who is this dude? Who is this person? But coming in and actually stepping into his home, you know, meeting his wife, hanging out with him, actually. And, you know, he became like... I was he he let me vent about things going on in my life and everything. I just really went into the music. It was completely necessary because I was going through real artist development, yes, learning yes. what things I could uh, to play to, learning how to play to my strengths mm-hmm. and what weaknesses I need to work on and what things I just need to completely take out of what I'm trying to do. Mm-hmm. Man, at that time it was everything. I was growing. I was going through a lot of things. I was like coming to age and figuring out who I was and so it was just a pivotal point you know what I mean so anything I do now I run through the den no matter what like I got my own campaign you know I'm doing right now but at the end of the day there's nothing I, everything is going to be partnered with the den it's going to run through the den um, you know they put my album together they'll master it you know track list all the above you know what I mean and it's going to get dropped through the den every time you know what I mean so that's super important. Man. That was so talk, everything. Tell me about this video. What, 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 oh, what that's was? crazy. That was a long time ago. Mm-hmm. We did that uh, some years 
Yeah. T- a timeline fast forward. We yeah. did another project this last summer mm-hmm. called Neat, yeah. and that one was a little bit different. That yeah, was yeah. Uh, <laughs> that was a whole different situation. And uh, we shot a video for that called Enough Man. You can find that on iTunes or on the Middle of Made app. Mm-hmm. And that was crazy. That was man. That project. I, I, I have you heard the Enough record yet? I haven't heard it yet. Oh I man, nah, I think, that was wild. I think five, throw, five probably put it on. Oh, he probably put it he in. Probably, mm-hmm. I, actually, you know what? Child I definitely did hear it. Then. Yeah, yeah, no, I that was produ- yeah. He produced that joint. The record. Oh, that's mm-hmm. that's the record that you um. The decimal. I hate the decimal. Fuck. I'm probably missing. I'm missing. I'm probably kissing. I hate the decimal. Hey. And now it's ashes to ashes And dust to the dust I left you all my emotions Cause chasing cash was a must And now you all in your feelings You got this look of disgust At the end of the day You knew you was never enough But I mean like No disrespect So don't take it ass But I'm tired of you and your basic ass So you sip slow, you sip slow So you can live and last And you take shots and you celebrate And you smoke slow so you forget the past Cause I'm tired I'm frustrated, I'm wildin' I'm drunk as hell and I'm driving. I let this easy Jesus play pilot I should be wildin', stylin' Somewhere on an island And your ass is in your feelings Cause you knew you not invited in the chat, he was like, yo, who is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah Definitely. Yeah, man, we did uh, that project. We did the knee project, which because um, I ended up, I got some, into some trouble after we were finishing buying a conversation. While we were in the middle of pushing that, after we dropped that video, I got jammed up doing mm-hmm. some dumb stuff. So mm-hmm. I ended up having to, you know, pay a debt to society mm-hmm. at the top of the next year. Mm-hmm. So that kind of halted what was going on, mm-hmm. but we kept doing what we had. I dropped some records while I was gone that I had done before I went, and uh, so he helped me out with that as well, keeping you know musically relevant, you know, uh, on the blog sphere and so forth. So when I got back, it was just like, what's going to happen? And everything right there, I just got a point where I needed to clean up my life and what was going on. I knew I was just consciously aware of the fact that I needed to do better somehow. Even if it was going to be a mess, it could be a weld oil mess, you know what I mean? So that's what the neat concept came from. And all I drink is whiskey. So, you know what I mean? I just was, it was just a way to like, just a clever play on it, you know, just took my two vices, whiskey and women, and filtered my perspective and what was happening at that point in time. And we just came up with a concise and solid project. I worked with a couple of other producers at the time, uh, Tone Legend, Max Payne, and then the rest of it was all good. And, you know, we went in, recorded, put it together, and it's everywhere you can find music now. Fantastic. So, um, what are some venues, what are some locations that you played at, that you performed at outside of, you know, obviously Atlanta and now New York? Um, well, 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 you see, outside of Atlanta, just, yeah, yeah, outside of Atlanta. um, I, I performed at Cal State Northridge in California, um, yeah. all through Macon. Yeah, uh, Macon. Shout out to the, shout out to the historic, what is, um, the Grant's Lounge. Grant's Grant Lounge, Lounge yeah. historic Grant Lounge. Shout out to Doshi Wu out there. Man, uh been to New Orleans. Mm-hmm. Um Valdosta. Valdosta, Valdosta man. Yeah. Shout out to Jimmy Hennessy, man, the Lucky's pub out there. Uh man, I know it's more, it's crazy. I've been to Florida one time, d- did some stuff there. And now here we are in New York, man. We we was in Brooklyn, that was crazy. That was wild. Mm-hmm. That was truly wild. <laughs> I overheard y'all when y'all were recording the first segment. And it did feel like I was on Edgewood. Mm-hmm. That's what made me comfortable about it, I think. Because at first I was like, I'm about to go up here. I'm about to do these uh, records that nobody's going to be trying to hear. That It's going to be all straight, you know, gutter hip-hop. You know, I got records like that, too. But, you know, those are far removed from where I'm at. Mm-hmm. And I got up there and I was like, man, I'm home. <laughs> For real. Like, yeah. that's how I felt. Like, So I went up there and did my thing. And, yeah, man, we're really trying to push it now, though. Really trying to take the music out. Knowing that you got a solid project you could roll with and you could introduce to different types of people. Because that enough record. I've had white, black, brown, Puerto Rican, and Asian people all give me a great response from that. You know, old and young, you know what I mean? And that just lets me know that we got a dope formula for what yeah. we're trying to do. So yeah. I want to get it to the people and hit it on the road and push it uh, before I drop this new stuff I got. That's what's up. How do you stay, you know, being in all those particular, there was, there was a follow up behind that question. Okay. Where do you, where do, how do you stay, you know, engaged? How do you stay connected with all the fans that you would have met, you would have met all these different cities and, you know, and colleges that you would have performed at? Right. Number one would be social media, of course, which I suck at and I hate. But number two is, um, 
in the second quarter, we uh, we put together a, um, basically a, a website rap based app. Okay, you know what I mean? Okay. Uh, so it's a one stop shop of everything I do from merchandise. I can sell events through it. Uh, my videos are up there and photos and everything that's going on. And if you have it on you and you keep your push notifications on anything I do new, I just send that out. That's what's up. And then so you guys get an alert and you get feel connected and everything's cheaper through the app as well. You know, if you're buying merch, you'll get like a $5 discount on everything that we do there. So that way, man, and just trying to keep stick to the script and consistent. We make timeless music for a reason. So the new people and the old people don't ever feel like they're not on the same page, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. That's, nah, mm-hmm. that's very important. I, not to not to go on to another, talk about another artist right now, but uh, Tory Lanez, I have never listened to anything from him. And then I think Chicks Tape um, 3 came out, mm-hmm. and he had he had a whole bunch of like older R&B mm-hmm. merged together, and it was a bunch of samples. And I was like, oh, this is fire. I'm like, okay, now I can listen to him. But if I had went in and listened to something you know, new that he put out, I might not necessarily have gotcha. connected immediately. Mm-hmm. So I, I definitely appreciate that. And, you know, going back to your app, you know, I, I always tell people, you know, you must invest in yourself. Yeah. You know, if you don't invest in yourself, how can you, how can you convince someone else to, to invest in you? Or even, not even, and when I say invest, I don't just mean money. I also mean time. Like, people have to take time to hit play regardless of how long your song is. That's time and you don't get that time back. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? So... Um, but yeah, Jay, so Jay Good, you know, like now that you guys have really worked closely together, you know, it is a formula that you're going to be working with other artists completely with or whatever, or what, what, what's the process here now? Man, to be honest with you, so uh, a couple of months ago, right, um, I just had this, um, it was a rude awakening, mm-hmm. right? Like I told you earlier, I came into the game as a producer, mm-hmm. like uh, that was my dream to be a producer. Yeah. Um, in the midst of, you know, trying to get placements and all of this stuff, the, the industry beat me down, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and that's why I started focusing on the website and the podcast yeah. in 2012. And the work that I've done there, I realized this year that, like, people don't know that I produce. Mm-hmm. And I started DJing as well, like, earlier this year. So I that's, I had to create a different moniker. And that's where mm-hmm. Last Name Good came in. Mm-hmm. And, and I just created this new moniker that's going to be my producer name and my DJ name. That is my producer and DJ name. And because of the way that I used to work, now I only focus on a handful of artists, man. So you got Div, who I work very closely with. Jay Coop is who I work closely with. Um, Layla Martinez. Those are That's that's like my core. And, mm-hmm. and of course, winning team. So winning team, that includes... Um, uh, Spooks McGee, Truth Hayes, Abib Jalil. Mm-hmm. Those artists have, you know, whatever they need from me. But I just keep it small, man. Like, because I, I used to really go out and try to work with everybody. And, and it got to the point where I wasn't enjoying what I was making. Mm-hmm. I was literally mm-hmm. making music for a living, trying to get placement. So now I make, I make art. And I'm only going to make my art on certain canvases. And this is one of the artists right here. That's amazing. Straight That's amazing. Up. And then to hear that... To hear that, you know, be like, like you're right here listening to that, whatever, I, as an artist, how does that make you feel? And what advice would you give to someone else looking for something similar to this, this this formula? Oh, man. First off, it's I guess I'm spoiled with it because that's the only formula I know how to go mm-hmm. is it's got to be like that. You have to build relationships and start with the same people. And if we really go back and we look at some of these, you know, major artists resume, they've been working with the same people since day mm-hmm. one. That's how you develop a sound. That's how yeah. it sounds like that person is because they've been rocking with the same people since jump because what art artists like it's it's it can go energy can be moved so quickly. You can be in a session and somebody who's not usually there could walk in and the whole vibe of the room <laughs> is off and nothing gets done immediately. Mm-hmm. You could ruin time and money dealing with the wrong people. So I will say from the very beginning, I know it's cliche, you have to be completely transparent and honest about what your budget is, what you have to bring to the table and what you're trying to do. Mm-hmm. And if you don't know that, say that too. Yeah. Because then you can see who really is for you and who's not for you and what they can do. Mm -hmm. If you say, I don't have any money, I don't know how to maneuver in this landscape, but I want to try and I have the time and some resources to do it. All right, here's my resources. This is what we're going to do. Does that match what you want to do? Because in every relationship, it's like what you won't compromise Mm -hmm. on is the only thing that's going to be the problem. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So come out. Transparency is key in the beginning. And don't waste people's time. Absolutely. You got to give you dap on that that one because uh, best believe that... That's probably some of the best information I've heard 
um, anyone say in a minute, particularly art. How old are you? 25. 25, son. See, it's artists that's 28 that still don't know that. You know, it's artists that's 32 still, you know, rapping out here, not realizing that it's completely more than just you as an artist doing your bars, you and your, you and your instrument. Like, it's significantly more than that. You know, Absolutely. So, you know, just, um, I really appreciate that. Shout out to social media again. By the way, the shirt is fire. Hey, man, I got to get you one, bro. You yeah. you got me. You, you wear hats? I definitely wear hats. All right, man. I got something for you. I got bad, something bad, for you. Bad. Say no more. So, shout out, shout out social media, everything like that for people to find you. Yeah, you can find me um, at D-I-V-A-N-C-E on Instagram. On Twitter, I think it's D-I-V-A-N-C-E with a W at the end. My name's mm-hmm. Devon Walker. I just go by Div by short. The moniker's D-I-V dot W. You can put that into Pandora, Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal, uh, I mean, Google Play. All the above, or in you know anywhere you can find music, or you want to look for music, you can do it. Uh, man, tune into y'all podcast and Shazam it, and it'll tell you where to find it too, man. So we just out here thugging, man. But do take that time. I do urge anybody who felt something in this interview or has listened to some Div music in the past and they want to grow, download that Middle of May app that is available for the Android and all Apple users. Just Middle of May, like I'm in the middle of. I made a cake yesterday. One word. Middle of May dot today as well for the website, man. I, I, we, it's, you, it's really not that hard to find me if you take the time. Dumb. I promise you. But I appreciate y'all having me here. This is a blessing, man. Dumb. We in Brooklyn. You be in Brooklyn. We in Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Yo, we, yo, we gotta, we gotta think of a name for the, for the studio, yo. It's not really looking like all like pretty studios in this right now, but yeah, it's I think a name for the studio. This is Indie Creative Networks. Yo, we have a. We have a space, yo. We got a creative space. That's, That's whole crazy, space. Yo, And we're the first people to do something y'all here right now. Oh, man. People. This has been happening my whole trip, though. <laughs> I, I did an interview Friday with somebody that was their fifth year anniversary of being on air. Really? And they never have artists or anybody in there. And I just happened to walk in not knowing it was a big deal. Like, yo, do y'all drink? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I pulled out a gallon of whiskey. And they're <laughs> like, course. you know, it's actually like a big deal. This is like our five-year anniversary show. Like, you just walked into something crazy. We party for an hour and a half before the interview even started. Wow. So it's crazy to be like in your like your first time, you know what I'm saying? We we breaking the bottle on the on the bottle of the boat right now. Definitely. So this is wild. And Next I, time I'm, I'm gonna have some whiskey for you, I promise. Oh for sure. Jameson only. Jameson only. Back, got you. Jay Good, last name good, yo. Last gotta, name good. There yo, you go. Shout out to social media and all that. Let people know where they can find you, of course. Yeah. So here's the thing, right? I just have two Instagrams. It's as simple as that. But I tell people that Straight Out the Den is the company. So that's Straight Out the Den, S T R, the number eight, O U T D A D E N. If you're looking for me to, uh, for DJ services, or uh, if you just want to follow my everyday life, last name good. Last name good. Spelled the correct way. <laughs> <laughs> Lessons we learned down the line. Yeah, and um, you definitely can hear Shout Out to Den. Um, they're on Indie Creative Network, man, yo, every Monday. Music Mondays, yo. Uncle Razor drops on Monday. Elite Music Radio drops on Monday. Um, Shout Out to Den drops on Monday. Um, Audio Audio Escape, based out of Canada, they drop on Monday. Yo, everyone drops on Monday. It's the mu- Indie Music Radio be out here. Anyway, so this is Wise um, at Uncle Radio Show. You can follow me on Twitter as well, at The Real Wise. That's Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Don't follow me on, don't follow me on Snapchat. That's kind of weird. Um, but yeah, man, yo, we out. This is an Indie Creator Network podcast. I did it.